Hello everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan if you're new here and if you're not new here, then welcome back. Happy to have you here. In today's video, I want to talk about how to start a healthy lifestyle. I want to go over the basics here today and specifically I want to cover the seven pillars of good health. Um, about, I want to say six months ago or a little longer, I made a video on a beginner's guide to healthy eating and I've wanted to since then do a follow-up video on kind of a beginner's guide to healthy living. So if you are new to leading a healthier lifestyle, then this video is for you. And if not, then I hope that this video serves as a helpful reminder for some really wonderful ways that we can lead a healthier lifestyle. So let's get started. So pillar number one here is water, hydration, making sure that we're drinking enough water every single day. The human body is made up of up to 50 to 60% water and it's really essential for a number of different things for making sure that we can properly distribute nutrients throughout our body, um, healthy bowel movements, right? Staying hydrated helps to support our digestive function, um, our skin health, our energy levels as well. There are definitely a number of filters out there that you can get for, um, for filtering your water. Uh, we use a um, Brita filter, we use like a pitcher that we have in our fridge, so we just fill it up with tap water and then we keep it in our fridge. And that's what we are currently using right now, but there's a Santivia filter, there's the Berkey filters. Um, if you are able to, then definitely look into getting some filters for the water that you drink. And a little hack that I have here to share with you that can help you to drink more water each day is to keep a glass of water near you or a water bottle near you, a reusable water bottle ideally. Um, I've always found this to be really helpful and really this goes for kind of trying to get into um other kinds of healthy habits is sort of like if you see it then you're much more likely to do it or eat it even you know having a, a bowl of fruit on your countertop or seeing your yoga mat or uh, your running shoes just having them visible is going to make it much more much easier for you to make use of them so same goes for water Number two is, of course, nutrition. Everybody is so different when it comes to what diets are best, what foods are best, and I actually have a whole video on how to listen to your body because that's really what is so important here. I will also leave that video linked below. Um, but what I wanna talk about here is really to not overcomplicate it. What I mean is eating real, whole, unprocessed foods as much as possible and to cook from scratch as much as you can as well. When you do that, you know exactly what's going into the meals that you're making. You're able to choose the ingredients yourself and you're much more likely to be making or to be getting more nutrition into your diet when you are making food from scratch. And also something that you wanna do here is to get inspired as much as you can. When I think back to over a decade ago when I was just embarking on my health journey, one of the books that stands out in my mind that is still one of my favorite books to this day that I have, I believe I've mentioned this book before, is uh, Mariel Hemingway's Healthy Living from the Inside Out. I love this book, um, but just get inspired from you know other books that you see, maybe some cookbooks, maybe blogs, and uh, have fun with the foods that you're cooking and when you're at the grocery store. The more colorful fruits and veggies that you can throw into your cart or into your basket, the better Better, you know that you're on the right track if you're doing that. Pillar number three is sleep, making sure that we are prioritizing sleep. So did you know that we spend about a third of our lives sleeping? Crazy, right? It's a lot of sleeping and it's it's easy for us to feel like to overlook sleep and how important it really is or perhaps you know sometimes it's just harder for us to get a, a good night's sleep you know maybe we have young kids maybe we're having other issues with sleeping but it really is so key to the overall health of our entire body and the reason for that is because when we sleep our cells and our tissues have a chance to regenerate it's really good for our uh, cognitive function and our memory for the next day when we're sleeping our mental kind of our 
brain's cache is cleared out through the night. So um, it's almost like a cleansing experience for our brain. So some things that you can do to try and get a better night's sleep are to go to bed and to wake up at the same time. You also want to try and sleep in a dark room and a cool room. And if you want to, you can even try using some essential oils to help you sleep. Like lavender is one of my personal favorites. So if you have a diffuser or if you have like a roll on, you can do that as well. I have a few different essential oil roll ons, um, but those can really help to act on the limbic system in our brain and help us to calm down. I do have a whole video up on some sleep tips that I encourage you to check out. I will leave that link below. Next up is exercise and just daily movement. And something that I want to have you remember here is that our bodies love movement. We thrive off of movement. It is what we are designed for. In today's day and age, a lot of us spend a lot of our time sitting, lying down, um, you know, being kind of stagnant. And really though, our bodies are meant to move in all different kinds of ways, different paces, different speeds, different, you know, positions. And we feel good when we move too. Um, exercise is really good for our mental health, our mental and emotional well-being. It's also really good for our bone health and our heart health. Even some simple stretching in the morning is really good to just get your blood going and blood circulating. Um, so really put an emphasis on making sure that you're moving your body every single day. And I don't care when, just whenever and however. And again, if you are kind of new to moving your body more often, then don't feel like you have to be doing you know, an hour long workout five days a week. Absolutely not. Even honestly, even just 10 minutes of a good brisk walk in the morning or after dinner is really wonderful. If we overexert ourselves, not only can that actually add an added stress onto our body, so it actually can be not so good for us when we're pushing ourselves harder than we need to, but it's also, it can be discouraging because we often feel like it's too hard, we don't enjoy it, we don't wanna do this. Um, so, you know, pace yourself, start slowly, and also find something that you love. So for example, I started doing ballet almost two years ago. I do that once a week and I really enjoy it. Sometimes there's a bit of trial and error here. You gotta try out some new things, find what you like best. Pillar number five of good health is making some swaps to your home and your personal care products to uh, less toxic options. What we inhale, what we absorb through our skin on a daily basis can add to our toxic load. There's also a number of different additives and preservatives and different products that can be endocrine disruptors. Some ingredients that you wanna look out for on packaged labels are things like parabens, um, fragrance, which by the way, fragrance on its own, just the title fragrance can contain in and of itself up to 12 ingredients. And what I would say here, my suggestion is don't feel like you have to make swaps overnight or you have to throw out every single thing in your cup you know today just make some swaps over time and start with the ones that you use most often or that are being spread all over your body most often so like lotions foundation aluminum based antiperspirant those kinds of things pillar number six is mental health. So our mental health is just as important as our physical health. They really, you know, can't be separated. They're, they're very much so intricately connected. We want to manage our stress levels and try to reduce our stress levels as much as we can because stress is one of the biggest culprits for all manner of health conditions and just also affecting us mentally and emotionally. And even something to consider here too is your mindset and and your internal dialogue. Our thoughts impact our emotions, our emotions impact our actions, and so we just wanna be aware of this and doing our best to do things like practicing some self-care as much as we can, prioritizing activities that we enjoy, or speaking to a therapist or a friend that we trust, you know, opening up about the things that are on our mind. Even journaling can be really great. But speaking of friendships and relationships, that brings me to our final pillar here of good health, and that is relationships and community. So have you ever heard of the saying that you become like the five most people, five most people, five people that you spend the most time with. You become 
like the five people that you spend the most time with. That's it. Um, it's a really good quote, and I actually feel like I can very much so relate to that. The people that we surround ourselves with, that we spend the most time with, can really shape us and influence us, can influence the way that we think, the choices that we make, how we feel, um, what we believe in even. So, you know, be, be aware of the types of people that you are spending a lot of your time with and how they are making you feel, if they're lifting you up, if you feel really good when you're spending time with certain people or if there are people in your life that are bringing you down. The relationships, the people in your life that do make you feel really good, make sure that you're nurturing them and you're prioritizing those people and you're spending time with those people. And that is it for today's video. Those are all of the tips that I wanted to share and the seven pillars of good health. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned a thing or two, um, especially if you are new to the world of starting a healthy lifestyle. Leave me a comment below with which one of these you think that you need to maybe work on the most or if you have any other tips to share, I would love to hear from you. And don't forget to check out the description box because I have all kinds of resources there to share with you too. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.